today, um, but a good mix of hotels and non-hotels. Um, our city center folks are here as well. Um, so you have a good mix of uh, different types of members. So um, I think we're ready to go whenever you are. Excellent. Sounds good. Um, yeah, why don't we go ahead and get started. And just a, just a heads up for um, the CTB crew. I am going to record this today, so I'll send that oh, no. to you guys so you'll have a recording of this as well. Awesome. Um, so, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So, good afternoon, everybody. I know you can't see me, but my name is Chris Martin, and I'm a CRM training manager with SimpleView. Um, so, SimpleView is a company where what we do is we create websites um, database systems and extranets like uh, the new version of the, the Saratoga CTV extranet we're going to be going through today for um, CVBs and DMOs all over the world. So we've taken a lot of feedback from our clients and put it into this new version of the extranet and I really think you guys are going to like it. We've made the, um, the extranet or the member portal a little bit more visual um, with a lot more imagery and colors, and it's it's definitely a little bit more easier to use, um, which a lot of users really like. So, you know, we're going to spend some time today going through it and taking a look at all of the, um, you know, options and things that you can do in the, uh, the Saratoga CTB um, extranet. Um, one kind of thing I just wanted to start with, I'm, I'm calling in from my office here in Pittsburgh. Now, just so you guys don't feel shortchanged, yesterday I did a similar session in the morning from my office because... We, my wife and I just adopted this guy. So this is Remy. He's an eight-week-old miniature schnauzer. Um, I just thought it was only fair that you guys get to see this because the group yesterday got to see it as well. So he's at home with his mother right now. Um, she took the day off today. But um, we're not here to look at this adorable dog. We're here to talk about the extranet. So, um, yeah. Yeah. This is the new version of the extranet, so when you go to log in, now we're going to be going to um, this new platform. Your same username and password should work. You shouldn't really have any trouble with it, but if you do, um, on the new login screen is this forgot password link right here. So if for some reason your password isn't working, or you know, at any time in the future if you've forgotten your password, you can just click this link right here. And what the system will ask you to do at that point is just verify your email address and it'll send you a new password. The password that you'll get via email will be a temporary one. So you'll enter that in and then the system will ask you to change it to something more recognizable to you. So if at any point in the future you forget your password or if you have trouble, just click the forgot password link and a new email will get sent to you. Um, now, now that I think about it, if you're sharing your login with another person at your property, another staff member, and they were to um, leave, maybe move on to another opportunity, you can use this to reset your password, you know, to use that as a way to shut off, um, you know, that departing employee's access as well. So a couple of cool things we can do with that forgot password. But once we have our username and password squared away, we click the login button, and that's going to bring us into the new extranet system. So, you know, the first thing that we see is that it looks completely different. Uh, so we'll start off with just kind of taking a look around, learning how to navigate and taking a look at some of the, you know, features that we're going to be using here in the portal. So the first thing that you'll notice is this um, image carousel, as we call it. So a bunch of scrolling images about things that are um, happening with the Saratoga Springs CTV. So that, along with partner bulletins and this post board, make up the home screen. And we can see a link to our home screen here. And, and now we're seeing that kind of the main navigation of the extranet has shifted. So before we had tabs across the top, now we're looking at different tabs along the left-hand side. And we've done a little reorganization. So let's kind of jump into these areas and just see what each of them can do. Um, after home, you know, we see our profile. And profile is kind of your, your property information hub. So we can view and update information about our account or our member record. Then we see contacts, so you can keep the CTV up to date with staffing at your property. Moving down to my benefits, that's a place where you can go to view the different benefits that you receive um, through your membership with the uh, Saratoga CTV. And a new thing that we're really 
I'm really excited about for, for our clients is a nice easy way for you guys to pay view and pay invoices. So your whole invoice history will be you know here under this invoice section. So that's our profile, kind of our you know membership business. Then the next option down here for collateral, and you can see this is kind of how these side menus work. We click on each one, then we get a little um, sub menu. So under collateral, this is kind of your, your marketing hub. So this is where you can take control of like marketing materials that are going out to the CTV's website. So your listing on the website and also media that's going to appear out on the website and other publications. Media in this case is going to be your imagery. So images of your property. Uh, also for our hotel partners, we have an occupancy option. And then for everybody, a materials request form. And that's a way that you can request materials from the CTB, like um, the official map, the area map, and, and other things that um, you know, they may make available from time to time. So we'll get in and take a look at the collateral section. Then we see opportunities. So this is something that can be used by all partners, all members. Um, opportunities or business opportunities coming from uh, the Saratoga CTB sales team. So we're thinking about opportunities in three different forms. We see RFPs, which are the traditional um, hotel room night opportunities, either coming in like group tour, um, you know, motor coach travel, um, corporate events, associations, those types of things are going to be found under RFPs. Media leads would be opportunities for any partner involving a media member visiting the area. So, I mean, that could range from hotel rooms to, you know, service providers, restaurants, attractions, anything. And same thing with service requests. Service requests are business opportunities. Um, a lot of times they come from our, our meeting sales or, or group sales departments, but don't involve room nights. So they're, you know, for more of our service providers, restaurants, attractions, um, sometimes meeting space only requests. So lots of other opportunities outside of, you know, the, the hotel uh, room night opportunities can be found under service requests. And then the last option we have is reports. And when we click on reports, we're brought into the reports menu. So we'll get in and take a look at that uh, later on in our training. If at any time you want to get back to that home screen, click the home icon at the top, and that brings you back here. A couple of other new features that, that I want to talk about, um, especially for anybody in the room that's managing multiple properties through the extranet. There's going to be a little bit of a change um, with the new system in that. In the old extranet system, if you were managing multiple properties, you would always go to this drop down here in the top. So we would switch between the different properties that we're managing with our login up here. Um, but that's changing a little bit. If the multiple properties that you're managing are described in what we call a parent-child relationship in um, the CTB's database, then now with the new version, those records are just going to blend together in all of our different areas. For instance, if I had uh, two properties that were in that parent-child relationship, when I went to like profile and accounts, you know, this is where we would see all the properties that we have access to. I only have access to one property, but if I had children accounts or a parent account, I would see that right in here as just another line. So another account that I could go to. And the same thing with all the other areas throughout the extranet. So parent-child relationship, everything's mixed together. Now, if you are managing multiple properties that aren't in that parent-child relationship, you will still go up to the drop-down here and switch between those properties um, you know, to manage the different items here in the portal. A couple of other cool new features um, that we have is we've given you guys as extranet users, as members, more freedom to kind of customize the extranet in the way you want to use it. Um, for instance, if I go into the opportunities section, um, either in RFPs or service requests um, for our, you know, our non-hotel properties, there's some really good options in here. So I'll use RFPs as a base, but the same idea under service requests. Um, we see a number of filters that we can then use to search for our different opportunities. In, in the new version of the extranet, you can completely control these filters. A number will be made, number of, of them will be made default for you, so you can you know, start with those. But then to customize them, you can use this Manage Filters option here. 
So for instance, maybe I don't you know, really need to know which group from the system this is coming from. This is where you choose between the tour travel group, meeting, or miscellaneous. You know, if I'm going to treat each opportunity the same, maybe I don't care about that. So then what I can do is go up to manage filters and then make any changes. So I could go to group type uncheck that and remove that as a filter. Then I can pick something else. You know, maybe if I wanted to be able to search for, you know, opportunities that have been sent to me based on arrival date. I can check that. Scroll down, hit apply changes, and then my filters are going to reset. I don't have my group type anymore, and now I have arrival preferred here so I can search in that way. So it's really up to you at this point. Um don't take those examples as recommendations of things you should change, just looking for something to kind of illustrate the point. But then with these filters, what you do is you'll search. So I would maybe search for, you know, any opportunity sent to me that has an arrival date in the next 30 days. I would hit apply filters, and then those business opportunities, those leads or service requests would show up in this area below. This area below is another place that you can customize. So we see all of these columns. And let me get an opportunity in here so we can just kind of see what we're looking at here. So this is kind of what the opportunity information is going to look like. And we're showing response date, lead name, the status, created date, you know, all of these different things. Um, and these are going to be set as a default. But again, you can customize them using this option here. Kind of anytime you see that little sprocket, you guys remember um, the Jetsons? That's where you can make some type of setting change. So if I click that, you know, my sidebar appears again and I can change the columns. So for instance, one of the columns is create date. Well, maybe I don't really care when the, the CTB created this record. I want to see some other information. Okay, cool uncheck create date, and then I can add something else, maybe the decision date, which is the date that the meeting or group planner is saying they're going to choose their destination and hotel. So I could click that, go down, hit apply changes, then create date is gone, and now I have that decision date here at the end. Now maybe that decision date is more important to me. So again, I can go into customize, instead of columns, I can go to ordering and reorder them. So I can take decision date and make it the first thing, or maybe the second thing. Yesterday I made response date the first thing. Um, response date is like your due date for these opportunities, so I like to see that first. But you can take these and reorder them in any way you want. Scroll down, hit apply changes. You can even reorder the filters as well. So if you want a specific filter to be the first filter that you see, you can rearrange those. Apply changes, and then everything kind of refreshes to your liking. So you guys have, um, you know, the ability to completely kind of customize this and take it wherever you want. Another thing that's great about the new design of the system is that it's what we call a responsive design, and that, that's a, a web term, meaning that the system's going to react to whatever size screen you're on. So we're looking at this on my computer screen, and I have this set to be optimal, but sometimes, you know, you go to a different screen, and maybe you zoom in or maybe it's a smaller screen, everything's kind of zoomed in like this, and then your dates look kind of funky. So then what you can do is just zoom out, and then the system's going to react to that. If we go to the home screen, you know, zoomed out like this, I see the image carousel, bulletins, and post board. Maybe this text is too small, and I need to zoom in. As I zoom in, you know, it looks like the post board just went away. Actually, the system's just reacting, and it moves the post board down below partner bulletins. So now I have bigger print. And, you know, when I did that, my side buttons got a little bit smaller to make room for that. So the system's going to adjust to whatever screen or screen settings you're using. So you'll find it pretty easy to use on a mobile device, iPad, even your phone. Um, the system should kind of reallocate itself so that it's usable on, on any of those screens. I am going to zoom a little bit out here just for, for right now. Um, so that, that's another cool new feature that we have with, with the new extranet. So now that we've kind of taken a look around and seen some of those, um, you know, kind of global features, navigation features, let's start going through the different areas and, and taking a look at things. Um, as we go through, if you have any questions, um, we're going to spend some time at the end. So once we get through everything, we'll have a little bit of time left. 
um, to take any questions um, that you guys may have. But we got a lot to get through, so let's kind of get right to it. Um, let's start off with the home screen and talk about a little bit of what we see here. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is the image carousel. This is one of the things that I'm really excited about in the extranet because this gives uh, the Saratoga CTB team a great way to highlight different projects, promotions, or you know things that they're working on. So we can see here, view the annual report. Click here to view. So what I can do is then click on this, a new tab is going to open up, and it takes me right to the annual report. Um, so with this image carousel, they can highlight things, take you to places on the website, um, check out the different ways to promote your business, advertise today, same thing, taking you to, you to a place out on the website, well actually we're downloading a marketing opportunities guide. So that's, that's a great way for them to kind of get information out to you guys. Other things that you may see in here, and these images are going to scroll every so many seconds, but if you want, you can scroll through them with these arrows on either side. Um, other things that this link can do is it can take you to a place inside the extranet. So, for instance, you know, this could be update your, your web listing where you click, click here, and then this takes us right into um, our account information where we can make those changes to our property. So lots of cool opportunities for um, the CTB team to communicate things that they're doing to you guys as partners in a real visual way, which I really like. The image carousel is kind of an extension of partner bulletins. Partner bulletins, for those of us that have logged into the extranet, the old version of the extranet, is a familiar thing. It's a place where you know, CTB staff can post you know, information out to you, like how to take full advantage of your membership, so a membership guide. Um, advertising in the visitor guide, information about that. The bulletins have categories, so there's event bulletins, request bulletins, or look at all bulletins, like we are now. Any bulletin that has this little blue exclamation point has been flagged as important by the Saratoga CTB staff. And you can see if you've read them before with this little indicator here. So I looked at this one in training yesterday, it's telling me that I read this yesterday. Um, so for this one, I, it's important I haven't read it. I get a little briefing of what it's about, click the view full link, and then here's the full partner bulletin. And when we're looking at these bulletins, look out for things highlighted in blue because these are links that you can click on. So here I can send Craig uh, an email or I can download um, you know, the SCTV logo. Looking at you know, the take full advantage of your membership one. Lots of links in here. Click here to view the marketing kit. Click here to look at the website. Again, website, email, Angela, all of these different things. So be sure to check out those bulletins because there can be some really valuable information in there um, from time to time. And the other cool thing on the home screen is the post board. Uh, another new feature that we're pretty excited about is Simple View. One of the, feed, the pieces of feedback we got from our clients is that we wanted, they wanted the extranet to be more interactive for their members. So what the post board is, is a communication tool for you guys to talk to each other. So if you, you know, wanted to team up with another member in the area to do a cross promotion, or you know, just wanted to let other people in the membership community know about the services that your business provides, we could post that information out on the post board. Pretty easy. You see the little pencil icon here. Throughout the extranet, the pencil icon means to add information. So we click that, and then we can make our post. You know, this is my business. We do lots of cool stuff. I can click Create Post, and then that adds that post here to the board. I can also respond to existing posts. So Angela put this post in here if I wanted to respond to her publicly, so if it was you know, a membership conversation where we all wanted to kind of talk about tourism in the area, growing trends, stuff like that, I can post publicly a response with the speech bubble. I click that, this little box opens here, I can type up my response, click enter, and then post that on the board. Sometimes these postings are going to be a little bit more private. Like if we are looking um, for another member to team up with um, for a cross promotion, there might be pricing information, sensitive information that we'd need to exchange. So to respond privately, I can click the little envelope. 
and by clicking that the system looks to activate your email so I use Gmail I would hit open link and then that would open up my Gmail and I could send an email then to Angela so I can respond privately via email if I want as well another thing with the post board is any post that I make now I'm using my colleague Megan's account but since I created this post I see this red X so if the conversation has you know met uh, an end point or is no longer you know really relevant or I got the information I was looking for I can then take down that post same thing with any response I post I can remove that but I can't remove Angela's original post so I, I've seen lots of cool things in the post board I'm really excited to see other things um, as people really start using it as we roll this out to more and more of our clients so that's our home screen Lots of good communication tools, both coming from um, the Saratoga CTB and you know member-to-member -member, um, communication through the post board. Moving on from there, our next option is the profile, where we can update account, contact, view, benefit, and invoices. So let's just run through these. We click on accounts. We're brought into our accounts grid, and we would see any properties that we have access for in that parent-child relationship. So I can click right on the name of my account, or the pencil icon to edit or the eye icon to view the details. When I click the eye icon that brings me into the account details area and I can see some details about my property. So my account information, phone information, address, my image gallery which we'll talk a little bit more about later. I can see a quick glance of my invoices here, social media and some general info as well. Some of this information can be edited, so if I want to make any changes, I click the edit button. When I click edit, then I can see if I get, I can change like my website or email address. So if I get a new website, I can log in here and make changes to that as well as email. You know, get a new phone system, update your phone number. Social media, certainly want to, um, you know, update the SCTB on, you know, your different social media outlets so they can follow you and keep up to date with what you guys are doing and then some general information as well. Whenever we make changes to this info, very important that we hit the Save button to submit. If I make a change here and then just click on the home screen, those changes are not going to be saved. So we got to make sure we're hitting that Save button. When we're on our account detail, there's two other areas that we want to talk about. And that's over here under Related Details we see manage amenities and manage meeting space. These are two areas that house tons of valuable information um, for the SCTB to have about you guys. And there's actually shortcuts to those areas on the main account screen. So when we're here in the account view, if instead of hitting the eye icon, I hit this arrow, then I can jump right to amenities and meeting space. Let's start with amenities. Um, but what we're going to see here is lots of details about our properties. So, you know, right now we have a couple sections for accommodations, restaurants. You know, we can look to add to this as well, which is another one of the great things about the amenities section is that the SCTB team has complete control over what options are available in here. So I'll take on the role of a hotelier right now. So I'll look at this accommodation section. And then there's tons of fields in here that I can enter. So how many elevators do I have? What's my mass, my total group capacity? How many floors? Um, you know, check out time. All this great information. Continuing to scroll down, we have a bunch of yes, no options. So, do I offer airport transportation? Do I allow pets? You know, lots of important details for the um, SCTV team to have for your about you about your properties. You know, if if we're looking at restaurant details, when we scroll down here into restaurant. Um, we see some restaurant stuff, um, email, fax, phone, food type, private room capacities, what meals do you guys serve, do you have set menus, and, and so forth. So lots of great stuff. And think about it this way. You know, if we're using the extranet, the member portal, to get these opportunities, um, on the other side of things, the sales team can use this information to distribute opportunities. So for um, like a hotel lead, if we're working with a, a pet group, maybe a dog show that wants to come to the area, well, then the hotels that are going to receive that lead need to be pet friendly. 
So it's very important that if your hotel is pet friendly that we have this detailed as yes. Because when the sales team distributes that opportunity, they're just going to do a search, show me all my hotels that allow pets, and then distribute that opportunity that way. Same thing with you know restaurant information. If we're looking for um, like a banquet, a place to hold a banquet, you know they're going to need a certain capacity in private room or, and other things. So it's very important that all this information is filled out. Um, and it's something that maybe again you haven't looked at in a while, and maybe new things have been added. So this is kind of the first thing that you want to do when you get into the extranet. Check these amenities. Make sure they're up to date. Whenever we make changes, just like before, we click Save to update. The other area that we want to look at is managing our meeting space. And this is kind of an extension of the amenities, but we wanted to highlight it in its own area. So there's two parts to the Facility Details page. Standard Amenities, which is amenities about meeting space at your property. So if I click Edit, I can make changes to these types of things. The number of meeting rooms that I have total square footage, How? what is the square footage of my largest room, ceiling and capacity in that largest room. Scrolling down, we see some other things about the number of booths we can accommodate, exhibits, description, space notes, and then we can actually even upload a file. If we have a floor plan or a schematic, I guess sometimes it's called, I don't know, um, but we can upload those types of details into here so that the SCTV team can check that stuff out and, and know more about meeting space at your property. After we make any updates, we click Save. And then that brings us back to the facility details area. And down here below standard amenities is this room section. This is where you can put in details about every room at your property or you know whatever possible meeting spaces we have at, at our, our member. So we see one here for the grand ballroom. I can also click new room and add in a second. So this is another room. And its square footage is some huge number, which means it's really big, and so forth. So we can add in those details, click save, and you know continue to detail out every meeting space at our property. Again, super valuable for the um, you know the Saratoga team to have, because then they can check and find rooms that are gonna fit the uh, meeting planners, group planners that they're working with. So lots of good stuff under the profile accounts area. Well, we're going to move on, continue down the profile, and look at contacts. So this is where you can keep you know, the SCTV team up to date with staffing at your property. Um, when we get into contacts, um, one thing that you're going to see is that all of the staff that the Saratoga team has on file about your property is going to appear here. You may see old contacts that no longer work at your property. The reason for that is that we don't really delete contacts out of our database system. Uh, one of the big things that the SimpleView CRM system, the database that um, the CTB team uses, um, one of the things it does is store history. So if I deleted Chrissy, then all of the conversations, records that I had about Chrissy would still be there, but it wouldn't have her name on it anymore. So I wouldn't know who I talked to in this meeting or who I sent this email to. So instead of deleting Chrissy, what we do is we turn her inactive. And I have a filter here, my contact type filter, set to show me primary and secondary. But there is a third type that is inactive. So if I uncheck them and just have it show me everything, when I hit apply filters now, I'm going to see some old contacts. So Chris George and scrolling down here, Mark Rubenstein. So also Tim as well. So you know the first thing is if you're seeing a lot of inactive contacts and you don't want to see them cluttering up your box, go up to contact type, check off primary and secondary, and hit apply filters and then you'll just be seeing active contacts. The other part of this contact type thing is if somebody does leave your property, you want to inactivate them um, as soon as you can. Um, and this gives you guys control to do that. Um, I've been in this industry for about eight years, and I've seen some things from departing employees. Um, you know, one thing they could do is if they have access to opportunities, take business opportunity information out of the extranet into their new opportunity, so into a competing property in your market, so we certainly don't want that. Um, I've also seen 
let's just say not so flattering pictures put in the media area. So again, when somebody leaves, you know, what we want to do is log in here. So if it is Chrissy, what we would do is then edit her record by clicking on the pencil icon. And then when I click on that, we can update her contact information. We scroll down to contact type and change that to inactive. And then click save. At that point, she's automatically turned inactive and her access to the member portal is cut off. Um, also at that time, the SCTB team gets an email notifying them that you made that change. And, and that pretty much happens anytime you change anything um, in, in the member portal. Um, they're getting notified whenever you're updating you know, information about your account, um, contacts, and everything in here. So now Chris, Chrissy's inactive, she can't log in anymore. Um, so we can go back to this contacts area, or you can hit this return button right here. And now I can use this to add in Chrissy's replacement. Uh, a couple ways that we can do that. One, we can click the add contact button, and then just add a new contact from scratch. But sometimes your new employee is gonna have all of the same information, maybe the same email address, same phone number as their predecessor. In that case, what I could do is go and look at just my inactive contacts, hit apply filters, and here's Chrissy. So if it was Chrissy's replacement, what I can do is click this button right here. Uh, it's the clone button. It kind of looks like two pieces of paper being copied. If I click that, the system's gonna create a new contact with Chrissy's info. So I could then just go in and say we're hiring my brother, type in his name, but if it's the same email address, you know, I don't have to change that. So if it's like a generic one, like sales at chrisshotel.com or something like that, you know, just a little shortcut. And then addresses, preset, um, phone information, and everything will be, you know, left over from the old contact. So a little bit of a shortcut when we're creating new contacts. Just remember, when we're adding new contacts, we either want to hit the clone button or the add contact button. We wouldn't want to take Chrissy's record and then edit it and put Nick's information in. Because then think about, again, about the history. A conversation we had with Chrissy last year is going to look like we had it with Nick, and that's not accurate. So we're always either cloning or adding a new contact. When we do add a new contact, you know, the types of information we're, we're entering is first and last name. And when we type in their first and last name, the system puts those two together and creates full name. You want to be a little bit descriptive in department and title. It's not required. You know, required fields appear in red. But department and title lets the SCTB team know who is this person, what permissions in the extranet and what access should they have, what emails should we send them, those types of things. So it's good to be descriptive there. Choose our contact type, you know, for an active contact, either primary or secondary. How should the SCTB team reach out to this person? In this day and age, mostly email. Put in their email address. And then next to their email address is this yes, no option. In this day and age with like spam filters, it's actually really important that we get your permission to email this contact. So in order for the Saratoga team to email this address, we first need you to click yes, agreeing that it's okay for us to send emails to this person. If they're going to be receiving email notifications about sales opportunities, either RFPs or service requests, this needs to be checked, yes. Then we have address information. Mostly we'll use your member address. Um, you can change that if you want, um, but most of the time it's going to be the same. Here's phone information. You can fill out um, a way for us to contact them by phone and some additional stuff if, if you want to. Um, the one field in the additional information that I like to call out that can be helpful is the gender field for the Chris's of the world, for the Pat's of the world. Um, you know, it's an awkward mistake. Just a little heads up always helps. Also good for international names that might not be as recognizable, male or female. Um, we can give a little indicator here. Once we've finished entering Nick's information, we click Save. And then that's going to be stored um, here in the contacts area when we look at our active contacts. So lots of cool things that we can do with our contacts. 
So updating account and contact info, let's take a look at the benefits area. So under benefits, this is a newly revamped area where you can get details about the benefits you receive through your membership with the SCTV. So first thing we see is an overview page. So we'll see listings. So this is listing clicks from the website. So we can see trends and um, views of our profile on the website. Events we've been invited to. So opportun networking opportunities, event opportunities we've had. Leads and RFPs for our hotel properties. We can see figures about those. Um, for non-hotel and at times hotel properties, service requests. So we can see the business opportunities we've received through service requests throughout the year. Under services, there's also another item called partner referrals that you can view in the services section. Partner referrals is a, a feature that the, the Saratoga team can use when they're working with a client who just asks for a list of properties. So maybe I'm a media writer and I'm talking with Angela. And I say, yeah, you know, I'm really interested in the area. Can you give me a list of all the attractions? then what she can do is go in and put in a partner referral, list out all the attractions and send it to me, and you guys can see how many times you've been put on one of those. So that's a great thing for all partners, um, all members, you know, restaurants, attractions. Anytime we're giving out, you know, your information, you'll see that stuff reflected here. Um, In-kind um, services you've donated or expenses the CTB has had at your property and advertising opportunities that you've taken advantage of. Um, so lots of great information on the overview screen, but then each of these sections has a see details area. We can go to that details section by clicking here or on these links over here on the side. So if I click leads and RFPs, um, you know, again, here's a nice valuable tool for our hotel sales teams. Uh, the number of leads you've received, the number that we didn't respond to, the number pending went to another destination, lost to another property, the percent, we, the number we booked. So lots of great information here. As we scroll down, you know, we see those numbers. So from the meeting sales team, I've received three RFPs. I can click on this number and then see what those are. You know, going back to the summary, other things. So if I want to see the number that I've won, I could click that. Or here's lost to another city or assist that I've entered. You can always click on these numbers and see what they were. You know, service requests is another great place to see um, these benefits. You know, here in the overall graph, we'll see service requests in blue, referrals in green. But then down here, same idea. I can click on this number one and see what was that service request. Or if I go over here to the referrals column, I'll be able to click on these numbers and view the different contacts that have been sent our information, so who those referrals went to. Uh, so tons of valuable information here in the benefits section, both on the overview and in the details sections. The information that we're seeing is controlled by this filter right here. So if we're managing multiple accounts, we can pick which account, and then we have a time frame. So it defaults to the last 12 months, but you know you can customize that. So if I want to go way back in time and see like a long range of benefits, I can do that, or you know focus on just a short time frame. So lots of great stuff in that benefits section. Um, last thing on the profile, invoices. So here in the invoices area, this is a new thing to um, you know the new version of the extranet, a um, place for you guys to view your invoice history and you know, view upcoming or, or outstanding invoices and actually pay right through the portal with a credit card through a secure credit card payment processor. So we're looking at our invoices here. Um, you know, I can see this one that you know, was invoiced for a dollar, I didn't pay yet, so I owe a balance due. I can then go and click on the eye icon to open up that invoice, view the details, print it for my records, and pay now. When I click Pay Now, it's going to have me enter the desired payment amount. I click Submit Payment, and then the system takes me to a secure you know, payment platform where I can enter in my credit card information um, and then complete my transaction. And this, this payment portal is a very secure site, so we're using the latest SSL secure technology. We're not storing your credit card information anywhere. We're simply processing the transaction and then forwarding that on to um, the CTB's account. 
So nice secure way that we can pay um, those invoices. Back on the invoice page, if I click return, if you have multiple outstanding invoices, you can pay them all nice and easy with this button right here. So I can just pay my account balance. And then it takes me directly to the payment portal and I can play, pay the entire balance too. So nice, easy, convenient ways for you to take care of all of your membership business right here on the profile tab. Moving down to the collateral tab, you know, getting into some of those marketing ideas. Um, we can update our listings or media, the images of our property. If I click on to the listings, this is going to bring me into a, a listings grid. Um, so what I want to do, and, and, and some of you might see more than one listing in this area. You know, the data that we're looking at on my login is just sample data. So you might see things a little bit differently from, um, you know, what I'm seeing. But, you know, what we want to do is look at these four columns to identify the listing that we want to update. Um, for those of us managing multiple properties, we want to look at the company, um, then the listing type, category, and subcategory. Once I've found a description, and when, when I say listings, you want to think about the description of your, your business or property. So I'm looking at this, um, then I say edit. I want to make changes to my description. Um, I can, you know, let the SCTV know who for my team to contact about this listing, which of my addresses should we use, and then we see description here. So if I wanted to change this, I could go in and put whatever description about my property I want. Scrolling down, some other options is this details section. So for instance, I have listed as my phone number for my property all of these sixes. So maybe that's my you know, my office phone number, but for the website, maybe my website listing, I want to put a different phone number. Like for people, for tourists that are calling, I want them to call 1-800-RESERVATIONS or something like that. I can check this box, add that in here, and then this is what will display on the website, but I don't have to change my member phone number. You know, same thing we can do with like a website. If we wanted to you know, keep our normal URL in our profile, but then send people to google.com slash reservations or book now, you know, if you want to take them right to a reservations page, we can do that. Below that is website notifications. A great way to get like a little notification in your email every so many times somebody, you know, looks at your profile on the web. So I would put my email address in here and say I want an email every 250 times. So then every 250 clicks on my profile, I'm going to get an email notifying me of that. So a good way to keep up to date with who's viewing your profile or how often people are viewing your profile. Then the last thing we see is our listing images. So what we're going to see here is all the images from our image gallery and I can pick and choose which images to connect to this listing. So you know, one strategy that, that partners have done um, is a member will go in and upload like tons of pictures and then maybe seasonally log in. So it's spring's upcoming. So I'm going to put in all the pictures of spring and summer of my property. And then as fall comes around, put in, you know, fall foliage pictures or, you know, winter pictures as winter's coming around the corner. Um, so you can easily, with a couple clicks, change the images that are going out to the web. Once we're finished making changes to all those fields, we click the Save button. And then that's going to submit those changes to the SCTV team. Now one thing about listings and new images when we look at adding media as well, is both of those are going to require approval before they go out to the website. So when we submit the listing update, um, an email goes off to the Saratoga CTV team. They're going to go in, review those changes, and approve or deny it. Um, if it's approved, you'll get an email saying your listing update has been approved. And then just allow a little bh of time for the data to flow from the extranet out to the website. If your update is denied, you'll get an email with some comments as to why. Things that the SCTV team would like you to change, um, or, you know, that kind of idea. So, you know, they will be guiding you as to what they're looking for as well. So once we've updated our listing, you know, maybe we want to add some more images, so we go to Collateral Media. So in the media area, you know, we'd see any existing images, so what's already in our gallery. 
you know, I could edit those if I wanted to change the title um, of that image, or um, even here in the media section, I can connect it to a listing. But we can also add new media here. So I click, click Add New Media, give it a title, so this is going to be our koala picture, add it as an image or a logo. When I choose Image, then I get this File Upload field here. I can click Browse. And then I'm going to get my, um, you know, my computer Windows Explorer, which is going to open up, and I can then search for my pictures. So here's the koala picture. You know, I can click on it, click Open, or if you want, you can just drag it and drop it in here, which is kind of an updated interface. So you can just drag and drop that picture in, and then we have our adorable koala. And then once we've uploaded the image then we can connect it to our listings here. So you can either connect it to listings when you upload the image, like right now, or upload a bunch of images and then go into the listing and pick and choose. You can also upload images. There's one other place. Back on the profile under accounts, if you want to just kind of drag and drop a lot of images, you can go into your account info, scroll down to this image gallery section, and do the same thing. I can open up my Windows Explorer, and you'll have to forgive me, my computer's lagging a little bit, I might have too many things open, but I can pull down here my image library, go to pictures, and then grab any picture and just drop it into this section then the system's going to ask me how am I adding this as a new media image. I choose my type, title, and description. Add it. Now that's not going to allow me to connect it right to the listing. So if you were going with the let's just upload a bunch of stuff and then connect them later, you know, that might be another option for you. So just like listings, media also does require um, approval. So for both of those, look out for that approval process and allow time for processing. Then um, for our hotel properties, we see an occupancy feature. So this is where you can share occupancy figures with the SCTB. Pretty easy, we go down to our year. So if we're looking at 2017, I hit the edit button, and then we see our months, one, two, three, four, and so forth. So if I wanted to put in March numbers, the first thing I would do is put in the number of rooms I have available. So maybe I have 75 rooms available. Then I can either enter by percentage or occupancy. So by occupancy, if I have an average number, so on average, I ran at um, you know, 57% or 57 rooms each night. That gives me a percentage of 76. If I have the percentage, I can put in my available rooms of 75 and then put in, well, we normally run at about you know, 65%. That's an average of 49 rooms. So the system will do the math you know, either way. And then we can put in our average rate here. So great information that if you're willing to share with the um, SCTB, we can enter it this way, click save, and then that's nice, easy um, way for you guys to submit that occupancy. For all partners on the collateral tab, we can use the materials request form, um, a nice, easy way to request materials from the SCTB. So when I click on it, I would see any previous requests here, add new materials request. Um, then I can say any special instructions here, the date that I need these materials. Scrolling down, who should be the recipient? So if we're going to send it to Eddie, I'll click Eddie's in name, and his info populates here as the recipient. Um, our address, and then here's the details. So we see the ultimate Saratoga maps. You know, if I want to order 50 maps, I can throw that in, click Save, and that's going to submit that request um, you know, to the fulfillment team at the SCTB. So lots of good stuff on the collateral tab. Some marketing options under listing and media, occupancy, and our materials request. So let's keep moving. Let's move on down to opportunities. So this is, again, those business opportunities. Room night opportunities through RFPs, media leads for either room night or other opportunities and you know, non-room night opportunities through service requests. So um, you know, service providers, transportation, catering, 
uh, meeting space only, lots of stuff um, can be done through these service requests. Now all three of these go through a very similar process. So we're going to run through RFPs, but for you guys that are, you know, you're not hotel contacts, think about this process. Um, we'll come back and circle back and look at the service requests, but a lot of the same concepts apply to all three of these areas. Um, for instance, when I go into RFPs, you know, I'm going to see, again, a number of filters that are available to me. I can manage my filters, and it's the same under service requests. So when we go to service requests, there's not as many set as default, um, because I find from the service request perspective, you know, each of you guys have different types of businesses. So you're going to want to customize your search in your own way. You can still manage your filters here under the service request area. But one filter that's common to both service requests and RFPs is the status. So what stage of the business process are we in? Um, we see it here under service requests. If we go back to RFPs, you know, we see that as well. So when we, and, and they're the exact same statuses in both areas. So when we're looking at this, um, for both RFPs and service requests, um, our lead statuses um, are either open or close. You'll notice the two different types of statuses in here. Any open opportunity, either open or open bid sent, is an opportunity that hasn't passed its deadline or response due date. In RFPs it's called response date. Under service requests it's called deadline date. So if it's before that date, they're open, we can still log our response through the member portal. Once that date passes, everything moves into a closed status, and you can no longer submit a response through the extranet. So very important to keep an eye on that date. That's why I like to move it as the first column on my grid here. Uh, but let's run through these and see what they mean. So closed no bid sent means that it went past the deadline date and we never responded through the portal. Open or open bid sent, still available for response. Bid sent just means we've already responded. It just hasn't passed the date yet. Turned down means we've responded specifically saying that we can't pursue this lead or service request. So we're booked that day or we don't, we can't handle the type of service they're looking for. Uh, closed decision pending. That means that we responded and bid on it, but we're just waiting for a decision from the meeting planner or group planner. Closed loss to another city, something that we bid on and the meeting planner <laughs> Um, or, you know, group planner selected a different destination for their event. Closed canceled, we bid on it, but they decided not to have it at all. Closed won, that's where we can look up opportunities that we've won um, either part of that room night business or we became the service provider for that service request. Closed won properties to be determined is only something that you'll see for RFPs. It, what that means is that we have a commitment from the group to come to the Saratoga area, but they haven't officially chosen a hotel or, you know, they're going to be using a variety of hotels and there isn't a true headquarter. Sometimes we see those opportunities under closed one properties to be determined. I see it a lot with sports groups. Uh, and then we see closed lost. In this um, instance, that means that the, the piece of business came to the Saratoga area, but just at a different property or a different service provider. So when we're looking at those, you know, we can use those to find our opportunities. So, you know, we can look forward to new opportunities. If I want to go back in time and look at, you know, past opportunities, I can deselect everything under status and then use some of my other filters. But, you know, most importantly, to look at new opportunities, I'm going to go to open, apply filters. And then I see that opportunity, whether it's an RFP or a service request. So looking at it, to view the details here in RFPs, I click on the lead name or the eye icon. Then I'm going to look at these. Um, the first thing for leads I see is revision notes. So if something's changed about the opportunity, then um, lead information. So all the details about our organization, contact information. I'm sorry, was there a, was there a question? No, no. Okay, cool. Just heard a, a blip in the radar here. <laughs> um, yeah, so information about the organization, the opportunity, you know, room attendees, um, you know, the decision date is when the meeting planner is going to decide, 
we see that response due date, all the details down here. Look out for the meeting specs field to download additional documents, date information, room summary, um, you know, all kinds of great stuff. Then we see the responses section. And here's where you'll be able to respond to any date range that's listed down here. So for, for our hotels, you may see more than one date range, and you can respond separately to each one. Um, to respond, click the plus button. And then we're taken to our response information. First, are we pursuing this lead? Um, it's required that you choose yes or no. If I choose no, um, some comments are required. So just a little bit of detail as to why you're not pursuing this piece of business. Are you just completely booked, or is it not the right kind of opportunity for your property, that kind of stuff? Um, if we're saying yes, then certainly we want some comments. What are the details of your proposal? What do you have available? All that stuff. And, and, and with this, please respond to every opportunity that's sent to you, both in um, leads and in service requests. Um, you know, first thing, if we think about the benefit summary, um, in order for your numbers to be correct on how many you've responded to, we got to make sure we respond. And it's just really important for the SCTV team to know who's bidding on which pieces of business. So even if, you're, if you can't, log in, say no, little comment, nice and easy. There's another field for bureau-only comments, a place where you can put in, you know, kind of some notes that are going to stay confidential between you and your, your Saratoga CTB sales representative. Put in our rate. So what rates can we offer? So like 125 to 175. And then we scroll down to the room section. So here's where we can put in the types of rooms we can offer. So maybe I'm going to do you know any rooms at my property um, with a varying range rate of 125 to 175. In this room information section, it'll show you the number requested, and you can fill this grid out with the different options. Lastly, put in an attachment. So if you're going to attach a proposal, um, a contract formal bid, go ahead and attach that here. Click attach file and then find your file and upload. Once you're finished with your response, click save and then that's going to submit that response to the SCTV team. Uh, for our, our service providers, restaurants, attractions, service requests, same thing. And, and for hotel staff, I mean, you might get a service request from time to time, too, for like meeting space only that doesn't have any room nights or something like that. Uh, maybe for a, a you know, restaurant to have a banquet, something like that, too. So same idea. With our service requests, we've got our statuses. Um, we see we can manage our filters. You know, we'll go to open opportunities, apply filters. We'll see those down here. You know, we have similar columns. We can Customize those, make the deadline date first if we want. Click the name of the request or the eye icon. Then we're looking at request information. So details about the service request. Um, what type of request is this? What's the name we're calling it? Attendees, the deadline date, the group's budget for the service. The service. Um, information about location. A lot of the details will be in this description notes field. Uh, additional documents as well, where you can download any specs or things like that. Date and time information, contact information, and then the response section. So log your response by clicking the plus icon, pursuing yes, no. If we say no, comments are still required. If yes, certainly want to put in our comments, bureau-only comments, and attach a proposal, contract, anything like that. Click update to submit that response for the service request. So lots of great options under opportunities. And remember, you know, I'm just showing looking at new opportunities, but in both cases, you know, I could go into RFPs or service requests and look back in time. So, you know, that's why maybe something like arrival or a date filter is nice. So let me look back at everything that was sent to me that happened in the last 12 months, see which ones I won, which I didn't so I can think about how I'm responding and, and building these bids. The last section we want to take a look at is the report section. So under reports right now, we're listing the convention calendar. But this is another area that the SCTV team has complete control over. So they can upload new reports, um, add things to this. So you, definitely something you want to check out. And also look for things in the image carousel. 
because you know at times if a new report comes out like this we see the annual report we're clicking here and it's taking us out to the website which is great but a report like that that link could very easily just take you into this report section um, if that was more of a confidential membership report that we didn't want to post out on the public web so look out for new stuff in the report section this convention calendar happens to be an interactive report so when I click on it you know I choose a time frame so right now we're looking at the month of March and here's all the conventions that have happened now for our restaurant attraction service providing um, contacts that are that are joining us today this convention calendar to me is more for you guys because say I'm a restaurant owner and I'm looking at this convention calendar what I would do is look into the future so I'm gonna look at April April 1st to April 30th hit apply filters now here's all the conventions that are happening in April so think about it this way you know this is happening at the Hilton if my restaurant is across the street from the Hilton you know they're estimating a hundred people to be there during these dates on this day It'll probably be pretty busy that day so I can plan for that you know here's one 900 people that are coming to this event um, at the city center so if I'm around the city center I, I can expect a lot of people to be out and around on these days so this convention calendar is a huge benefit I, I really like when when my clients post a convention calendar like this because that's super valuable information uh, for all members in the community but remember check back to reports sometimes it might just be documents that you download um, others will be interactive like this but lots of great options um, on the reports area remember we can always go to our home screen to go back to here any other areas that we have access to uh, and one last thing when you're finished with your work in the extranet click the log out button um, we want to make sure we're closing our session and you know not leaving it open and vulnerable to stuff so just log out and then you're done so guys that really brings us through everything um, I know it's a lot but I really think when you get in it's it's pretty easy to follow um, and, and, and get in and use uh, remember get in there check those amenities make sure that stuff's up to date and all your property details and start there build out into your listings images opportunities and so forth so I wanted to at this point open up uh, the floor if there are any questions um, we can relay, relay those on to me I think we're good, Chris. great um, well thank you Thank you to everybody for taking the time to join us this afternoon. Um, I wish you guys all the best of luck with the new extranet. And um, if you have any questions, you know, contact the SCTB team, and you know they can help you out with whatever you need. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Everybody, have a good day. You too.